This is a series of a few videos about my attempt to build the world's best sliding table attachment in the DIY world to any table saw. At the end of the video, the saw is gonna look like this. But at first I had to work hard to come up with a solution for a couple of uh, technical obstacles. For example, how to uh, precisely connect the sled to the fence, how to connect the support beams to the fence or the sled. And yeah, this is, this is what I finally came up with. Aluminum connectors screwed to a wooden piece on the support beams. Let's do it. Yeah, there they are, the two coupling devices that connect the support beams to the sled. Obviously they go to the lower end of the support beams, as you can see in these images. This is the frame of the sled. It's also made from aluminum and I decided to fill it with sheet metal, plate of sheet metal, in order to make it more stiff. But it could have been uh, could have been wood also. Uh, I was just happened to have a uh, sheet metal lying around. Here I was noticing lots of friction, way too much friction, but wasn't able to accept it at that time. So initially I thought I go with with these uh, sliders here. In the groove. However, they might uh, tilt a little bit and then they add a lot of friction. <clears throat> I think the more simple solution is this. Less friction, simpler. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. I think that should be fine. Okay. Oh man, hopefully this works. Okay, now I'm um, going to try to adjust the table, this table, and first I'm gonna deal with this axis here. Okay. This is a difference of hmm, one, two, three, almost three millimeters. I think I'm gonna go with these screws as a kind of adjustable feet. Now for the other dimension. That's okay. Das ist zu hoch. That's too high. That's 45 degrees. Is it? No, it's not. Work. Not a 
exactly. Yeah, but only kind of, because there's still tons of friction. Uh, these uh, aluminum connectors, on the other hand, they turned out to work very well. Okay guys, um, although I'm pretty happy so far with the system, um, however I recognized a, an issue and I'll show you what I mean. The problem is, as I added more and more weight to the sled, especially when I placed this um, plywood on the sled, I recognized a, a pretty yeah, pretty severe amount of friction. Let me show you in detail what I mean. Okay. You see that piece of rubber band here? Let's see if I can pull the sled with this rubber band. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Damn it. And then I called the sales guy from the supplier Igus, Igus bearings, and he recommended those. Uh, no, these um, bearings you can see in these images with casters in it. Now my the whole sled is hanging one centimeter, 10 millimeters higher than before. I just place some more washers and this uh, what's that uh, hex nut and I gain approximately a centimeter and same thing on the other side here I change to the new bearings there's the hole and the other screw on the other side let's get it assembled and now the plywood and you remember the the old rubber band this was uh, the result and now oops all right okay yeah that's that's a whole whole different story that's Okay, that's important. That's really important because otherwise, yeah, otherwise I don't know. I'm using M8 screws as adjustable feet now. And these screws here, they are not a regular thread. Instead, they are a fine thread, so it's an elevation that's not 1.25 millimeters per, per round. It's only one millimeter per round, I think. I can adjust the height a little bit better, a little bit finer, but more important, a fine thread is kind of self-securing, hopefully. That's where we are so far. He's gonna, um, here I'm gonna make a an, an, an pivot point for the cross fence. And then we have this much of travel to put um, a workpiece on here and then we can, we can, Make a cut. 
like this. Yes. Honestly, I think um, this is it's fine to have such a such a long rib capacity, but on the other hand, I don't think that I have to cut that much that big pieces very often. So I'm thinking of um, making this making one version of this plate of this table. Uh, which is smaller, more suitable to do um, cross cuts for smaller pieces. Nice. Yeah, to make this is this is the back side. So this is going like this. It's running on this metal surface. And to make it run more smoothly over the metal, um, I will use this tape. It's made from uh, yeah, what is called Teflon. screws in there we are okay This goes in here, this comes there. Okay, and now I'm gonna insert it. I'm gonna take this screw here um, and just pull it in. Very basic. Perhaps I have to glue it, but uh, that should be no big deal. Okay, let's. No, that's too small. Okay, perhaps this one. Yes, that's fine. Okay. Okay, it's almost pulled in already. Yes, fine. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, above the surface here. Not proud of the surface. Okay, that's that's fine. Do you know what? I think I even don't have to glue it in. That's that's sufficient because all the forces are going this way because there's only a pull, not a push. So that's fine for me. Otherwise, I would glue it in. Let's put it back where it belongs. Huh? One screw is missing or something wrong? This screw? I don't know. A hey guy. So I just drilled a hole here. And yeah, prima. The screw goes in there. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. That's it for this chapter. 
Uh, that means there will be only one more video. Uh, in the last chapter I will make um, a stop for the fence. I will make uh, several flip stops. Um, I will do some testing with the saw. I think I will make one mount to take this fence off the saw, put it on the wall, put it back on the saw again and repeat the five cut test without any uh, adjustment in between. And I'm very interested if it's still accurate. We will see. Um, I think I will um, sum up the costs and then we will be done, I think. I hope so. And I hope the saw will work as designed and as I hope it performs. That's it. Thanks for today. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to be notified when the last episode is out. Have a nice day. Bye.